Hi everyone, welcome back to Nano for another publication review inside of virtual reality. So, um, what we're going to be talking about today is uh, some of the N-bomb compounds and how the N-bomb uh, psychedelics dock to serotonin to a receptor. What's really nice about talking about a topic like this is um, we already have the crystal structure for um, serotonin to a receptor with an N-bomb compound bound to it. Um, this is that crystal structure, which was put out by Brian Roth's research group, um, I believe in October or November of 2020, so a little less than a year ago. So we have this um, we have this crystal structure to work with, and look how N-bomb compounds bind to it, which will be interesting. Here we are inside of the binding pocket of serotonin 2A structure with uh, 25 CNNBOH bound to it. Uh, the crystal structure paper reports that there is a salt bridge between this protonated nitrogen and aspartic acid 135, which is common amongst all psychedelics, as well as there's a hydrogen bond between uh, this um, alcohol group and uh, serine 159, which produces a quite a strong interaction of stabilizing inside of the receptor. So what we uh, kind of want to look at is how do other you know, N-bomb compounds bind to serotonin to a crystal structure. And, you know, if we change some of these groups, can we change the activity of that drug at the receptor? For example, um, the methoxy groups in this N-bomb compound are in the 2 position and the 5 position. But perhaps, what if I were to switch the methoxy groups instead of having them in the 2-5 position, I can make them in the perhaps maybe the 2-4 position or the to three position and how might that affect the activity um, of the drug at the serotonin 2a receptors so that's kind of what we're going to look at today instead of having 25 cn and boh which has which has a cyano group in uh this position in this n bomb compound we have no cyano group at this position but we still have the two five methoxy position we could also change that to then bomb compounds, we have the methoxy groups in the 2, 4 position. In this end bomb compound, we have the methoxies in the 2, 3 position. In this end bomb compound, they are in the 2, 6 position. In this structure, they're in the 3, 4 position. Last but not least, in this structure, they are in the 3, Five position. So the idea here being that we can look at how do these different methoxy substitutions change the activity of the drug at serotonin to a receptor. So all of these uh, in vitro experiments were done by Allen at the University of uh, Ghent in Belgium. And what we can see is that if we look at the beta arrest and recruitment for either LSD or uh, present activation serotonin, let's take a look at the serotonin one. We can see that on the graph, it looks like 26 HNBOME did this the best in this bottom panel. So we have the strongest efficacy, as well as 24 is a really strong uh, recruiter of beta arrestin, and as well as 26 in yellow. So it really suggests that a methoxy group in the two position leads to pretty high potency. But then when you take that two position methoxy and change it to a 3, 4 or a 3, 5, we can see there's a drastic loss in both potency potency and efficacy of the compound, suggesting that maybe there's something special about this two position methoxy, which leads to them maintaining high potency. And if we change them to a three position, we see a drastic loss in the potency and efficacy of the N-bomb compound. So now let's look at how these dock to serotonin 2A receptor. So this is 23HNBOME bound to serotonin 2A crystal structure. And we would see the same interactions that we would see with 25C and NBOH being the hydrogen bond right here and the salt bridge right here. And, you know, what's interesting about these compounds specifically is 23 uh, has the methoxy groups next to each other. And what we found in this paper is that when you put methoxy groups next to each other, you actually decrease the potency and efficacy of the compound. So we saw that with 23 HNBOME and also 34 HNBOME, 
that respective to the other compounds, when you put them next to each other, we seem to see a drop in potency and efficacy. And that probably has something to do with sterics, right? When you put two large functional groups next to each other, there's going to be some steric interaction that forces them to be pointed away from each other, as in this compound right here. Versus if you don't uh, put them next to each other, they won't have to deal with the steric interactions of one another. This is 24H and Biome bound to serotonin 2A crystal structure. And what we can basically see is that the methoxies are docked in the 2, okay, 4 position on that ring. Same interactions apply. And the whole meat and potatoes of this paper study really comes down to the two findings are that you know, one, when you put methoxy groups next to each other, you reduce the potency and efficacy of the compound. And when you change a two position methoxy to a three position methoxy, you also drastically lose potency and efficacy. And I have a theory, a hypothesis. I don't know necessarily know if it's right, but here's what I think. So if you look at these compounds in the two position, Okay, in the two position, the methoxy is right here. In the three position, it's over here. It's a little bit further away. But in the two position, you're actually kind of close to serine 159. So you're right here. You're kind of close. And it's also close to this OH right here. So in the crystal structure that Roth, Brian Roth reported, um, you actually have a hydrogen bond right here. But I think that in the two position, this serine can form a rotomer where it turns. Let's actually look at that rotomer. So if we measure this atom to this atom, that's 2.57 angstroms. I think the serine 159 can form a rotomer. Whoops. I think that serine uh, 159 can form a rotomer where it actually hydrogen bonds with the uh, methoxy group in this position. And let's measure that just to see if that's plausible. Yeah, I mean, it's only 2.14 angstroms away. I don't know somebody computationally like Brian Roth might, you know, be able to tell me why this isn't uh, possible. Maybe there's too much steric terrain in the rotomer. I believe that the two position methoxies holds their uh, both efficacy and potency strong in the two position is because this serine 159 can form rotomers where it goes back and forth really quickly and it can form hydrogen bonds with both positions stabilize in the two position whereas in the three position it's too far away to do this and the three position methoxy is way too far away to actually do this and it can't form that rotomer and the reason serine 159 is important is because we see that hydrogen bond form between the um, alcohol or methoxy of the n-bomb compounds and serine uh, 159 on helix 3 it looks like and with LSD, you actually don't see as high of an interaction energy because LSD doesn't hydrogen bond here. Aspartic acid, we should note, is the strongest interaction at about negative 18 to negative 20 kilocals per mole. And that's because that's where the salt bridge is forming. That is the strongest interaction um, between N-bomb compounds, LSD, and many other lysergamides that bind to um, serotonin 2A. And then we have interactions that are a little bit weaker. So obviously I want to thank uh, Christoph and Ellen for collaborating on that paper with me, you know, about six months or so ago. It was really fun to work with you guys. And um, obviously Brian Roth for having that crystal structure, which made this um, publication on my end, doing all the modeling actually quite easy. So uh, shout out to Brian Roth. And until uh, next time, I hope you guys stay curious and are enjoying these videos. Bye.